The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. All right, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. We're going to start out the week like we usually do, taking a look at the DAX and then also the FTSE, which is the U.K. market. As you can see, we've had a pretty strong rally here if you're looking at these. Now, this brings us to an interesting point, folks. When some folks trade, they trade off different time frame charts. In other words, if you're trading off of a 15-minute chart, or an hourly chart, or a 30-minute chart, whatever you're looking at, use that as your guideline. Don't go jumping back and forth to a weekly or a monthly or something like that. Stick with what you're, what you're using at for the pattern because this is what's really controlling that particular time frame. And remember, your, your, the definition of trend is if you have higher bottoms and you have higher tops, you're in an uptrend. If you have lower tops and lower bottoms, you're in a downtrend. And that's what you have to do is you have to ask yourself, you know, what type of, uh, you know, the trend that you're in and then trade off that chart and then match up the, you know, the patterns uh, where you want to be an, ent an entry fee on this. Because if we take a look just at a little bit uh, longer time frame, just, just do, let's do the DAX first just to show you the difference in the types of patterns that you're looking. The first one you saw was it was very, very bullish. It had been going up quite a bit. But if you take a look at the DAX this morning here, going back to January, where are you? You're exactly at a 61% retracement. You've been there two days in a row. You have two ABCD patterns there. You can see the three drive pattern and the colorful triangles that are marked there from the Ensign software. So that's telling you, gee, this might be a really interesting spot here. Uh, to sell the DAX and the the uh, the, uh, uh, the FTSE. Let's take a look at the FTSE since we're doing that, and then we'll look at a few others because we're seeing a lot of things like this. Here's the FTSE. You can see it's doing uh, exactly the same thing that the DAX is doing. It's also in a sell mode, and that's uh, what you're looking at. All right, that's what we're watching today. Now, since we're talking about time frames and stuff, there is a pattern here in the market that is uh, very, very interesting that we looked at on the long-term weekly basis. We'll get up there and let you take a look at it. Here's the, uh, here's the pattern for the uh, NASDAQ on the weekly. As you can see, uh, we're completing what we think is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 expanding triangle. Gartley uh, put that down as a T6 expanding triangle T6. Uh, Wells Wilder uh, turned that pattern into what he called the reverse point wave. And what you're looking for is a close down. Now, if you'll notice here, since the bottom was made in December, you'll see only one red bar on the way up. There was only one weekly close where it closed lower than the previous week. Uh, that was up 18 out of 19. Folks, I don't think that's ever been done before. Uh, in the NASDAQ, where and actually the actual, if you're looking at the market from a trend point of view, you were, you were up 18 weeks in a row. I mean, in other words, you had a higher high, you know, than you did the previous week, either a higher high or closed higher, 18 weeks in a row. That That is uh, uh, an incredible outlier event. The only markets that I can remember from history uh, that did uh, something like that were gold and silver and also sugar. Uh, they ran 22 days uh, in a run, you know, before they finally uh, finally turned over. And when they did, that was the ultimate top, so I don't know. But anyway, this is a reverse point wave. You have all the characteristics that you need. You have the expansion between 1, 3, and 5. You have a very nice timing signal between the uh, point 0.1, point 0.3, and point 0.5, and of course, point 0.4 you know, ex extends down to below 0.2, and then it goes up and makes a, a new high. So that's what we're watching here in this NASDAQ today and some of the others that look a little bit interesting. Remember, this is uh, golden week, which means that the uh, Japanese market is going to be closed from uh, the 27th of April through May the 6th. 
and that'll be the longest period that that market has been closed since World War II. And uh, all that might mean is that there might be some, you know, illiquidity problems over there because uh, it'll probably be the Bank of Japan that's doing it. Remember, they are very notorious for doing bank robberies. In other words, pushing things, you know, out of extremes and then uh, reversing stuff. So uh, pay attention here. And I would certainly recommend you using stops during this time. Uh, you know, but if you know how to handle your risk, then, uh, you know, use a money stop or a desk stop. And some people are capable of using desk stops. And a desk stop means that, you know, you're, it hasn't been put into the market yet. So you have to get to that point where you actually have to call, you know, yell uncle and say, I quit. You know, get me out of the position. But you've got to know what that level is. Because everything that we do is based on the amount of money that we're risked, not how much money we're going to lose. And that's the whole key, you know, to understanding what you're what you're really watching. So now I think it's very important to remember that, that, you know, some people could trade without stops, but they're very disciplined and they know how to, uh, you know, so when it's time to, you know, pay the piper, they get out. That's basically it. But the other thing, since we're talking about stops, if you put your stops too close, and I mean, some people trade, uh, you know, the uh, E-mini with a three-point stop. I don't know how you can do that. That's $150 on a contract that's, uh, you know, looking to be uh, pretty close to $150,000. That is, uh, that's that's insane. That'd be like trying to t trade gold for a dollar stop, and I don't think anyone can do that either, but that's just my that's my two cents worth. I had an interesting meeting with my good friend Byron Tucker on Friday. We were talking about the old days, and one of the things he remembered was uh, he, he worked for Leo Malamud at the Merck. He was one of the fellows that was involved. Uh, well, Leo started uh, you know the foreign currencies and all the other stuff, the S&P and T-bills and all gold and all that. But, but one day uh, uh, he was putting orders in for Leo, and there was a big report due, and Leo was trying to buy some Treasury bills and Byron said, you know, there's a report due, you know, here we're going to, uh, you might want to wait till after the report. And he said, doesn't make any difference. He said, the market's going up. <laughs> and so the report was very, very bearish, and uh, he had bought it, and it turned around on a dime and went uh, straight up. Byron said he never forgot that experience because Leo had a real a strong opinion on the market, and the, you know, the market paid a paid off his opinion in, in nice uh, profits. But uh, those are just some of the things that you hear from the old days where some of these guys were just have an intuitive feel of, you know, what was going to happen next. And that's, that's not an unusual thing, you know, to have happen. We're going to take a little break here. And when we're getting back, we're going to talk about the gold market. And we're also going to talk about the bond market. Now, if you would like to call in, it's 877-927-6648. And then we think, I uh, haven't heard the music yet. What happened? Did I do something wrong? I guess I have a couple more minutes here. I must have, I must have did a timing thing wrong, folks. I hope we're still on the air. And uh, wow, what's happened? 10-4. Uh, Mr. Z is asking what Leo traded when... Uh, uh, before the, the the financial stuff, he, he was a uh, he traded cattle, hogs, and bellies. Yeah, that's basically it. That's what he did. He's still going strong too at ninety something. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I've been asked to take a look at the gold market here. And as you can see, that head and shoulders pattern that we've been watching is in force. Uh, as long as we can stay above the 1267 level in the uh, June gold, it looks like it has a potential uh, to go higher. We're down a little today, but we've had a nice uh, three-day run between Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So that uh, I think that's important to remember uh, that that's something that's going on. Now, I did want to share with you, uh, I haven't had, we had a, a two things, I think. For, well, let me do the market one first. And I just wanted to show you here, uh, if you'll give me one second to take a look at this, I wanted to show you the uh, the head and shoulders pattern that uh, one of our one of our friends from uh, in the UK sent, sent it to us. I'll get this up so we can take a look at it here. One second, I want to blow it up pretty big, but this is a really nice one. Now this is a uh, this is a 60 minute chart, of course, but it is the Dow Jones Industrial Average and uh, the thing that's important here, you remember now that the NASDAQ is making a, uh, an expansion. In other words, it's completed a new high up there. It's made a three drive pattern in the NASDAQ where in the Dow Jones, we're making a head and shoulders pattern. That's showing, that's showing a, uh, you know, some, some type of divergence. So I think that's important. Oh, we've got a request to take a look at the silver and I'm certainly going to do that. We'll bring this up to uh, let you folks take a look at it. Here's the silver. Uh, we're down slightly uh, today. Uh, as long as silver can stay above that 1470 per ounce, I think it's got a chance for a pretty good rally in here. But remember, there is a possibility that we have that uh, outstanding target of $14.40 per ounce. That's the 70 percent level. I don't know if it's going to get there or not because it stopped exactly at the 61 percent retracement uh, last uh, Tuesday. And so this this is a very that was a very strong rally that we had out of there showing you that that number was very good. And in addition to that, if you look at it closely, you can see that that was also an ABCD pattern. You can see that by the colorful uh, turquoise co colored uh, triangles that are in there. So that's uh, that's what we're watching. It's holding up relatively well. Now, if you're going to talk about uh, the gold and the silver, you really should take a look at the platinum because this is the one that looks the most interesting here from a, a bullish standpoint. Here's the uh, platinum chart 
you'll see that uh, we're trading up around a little below $900 an ounce. But folks, uh, my friend Jim Flanagan over at GAN Educators in Santa Monica, California, I think is the premier GAN guy that I know. If you like GAN, and I'm not, you know, I, I don't know much about it, but the the thing is, he's extremely. I mean, you talk about extremely bullish uh, platinum. He is. Uh, he's very bullish. I think if you're going to be looking at this, you'll notice that there's an A B C D pattern on platinum that comes in at the 879 level. Now maybe we'll go down one more time to test these, you know, because usually they don't run away. <laughs> without looking back and uh, if they do look back the platinum at 879 would be really interesting because if and uh, this is a big if if we close below that 870 level that that would really negate this bullishness it really would because the market had a chance to really go to the upside and uh, it would have reversed but that hasn't happened i'm just you know just trying to play the devil's advocate because you have to think about the patterns that don't work as well as the ones that patterns that do work. Now, we had a we had a really uh, interesting, fun guest this past week out here in Tucson, Arizona, and I I, I have to uh, I have to share this with you because it's really interesting the uh, the thing that he did here with these charts. Hold on, I just want to show you. Uh, this is uh, hold on, just give me one second. This is the page out of. Uh, okay, hold hold on one second here. There we go. This is a page out of John Hill's book that he did back in 1966. It was reprinted in 1977. But, uh, you know, he did so much work in this book. If you'll look to the left of this, folks, on the far left, look at the little yellow, pink, and turquoise tabs. I mean, about every third page was tabbed as something important, which I feel that book is pretty good. Anyway, I, I was so impressed that he did that much work, and he uh, he's going to be extremely successful uh, as a trader because he's uh, certainly risk-averse, but he's understanding the structure of the market uh, much better now, and that's uh, the whole thing that you're trying to look at because you're never going to uh, know what's going to happen next. So what you have to try to do is to focus on the patterns that are there at the time, and those are the ones that you want to be watching very, very closely. I think that's uh, something that we really need to uh, always pay attention to. No question about that. That's uh, extremely important. Okay, we covered the head and shoulders pattern in the uh, Dow Jones. I wanted to make sure uh, we covered that, and I'll just make sure I get this one here. Oh, here's something someone asked me about uh, in an in a email question over the uh, over the weekend. That is to look at the euro uh, on a long-term uh, chart going back to uh, see in 1985. It was the Deutsche Mark. That's really what that was. Uh, the euro didn't come into being until I. Think I think about 99 or 2000, somewhere in that ballpark. I uh, have to go back and look at it. But you'll notice the low in 2000 there. Uh, that's when my grandson was born. And uh, that's when uh, we started buying some gold for him for his uh, college education. And it turned out to be okay. But look at this monthly chart on the euro, folks. Uh, there's a you know, really strong bottom there at that uh, 104 and change that we hit. And then we rallied up to the 382 retracement, uh, and that stopped right on the money at 125. We're now trading at uh, 111.50. Now, that is broken down below that 61% uh, retracement. It's very oversold, so we could get a rally in here, but this is a long-term very bearish market with a price level it looks like it's going to go down to 90 again which you know it was 90 back in 2000 and you can see it makes these trips sometimes uh, and that you hey look folks i'm just showing you this chart you can't make a trade off of a monthly chart at least i can't because the amount of money that you have to risk to see if you're right is a little bit a uh, little bit out of the uh, out of the ordinary let's put it that way so I hope that helps. Uh, anyway, it's uh, you know when you know I hardly ever look at monthly charts. Uh, about as far back as I go is over the weekend. I always look at the weeklies, but monthlies I don't look at them. That's why someone asked about it, and it's uh, it's nice to look at the picture of it, but frankly, it's uh, it it's just a little tough right now to look at a monthly chart and probably look at it. So.
Yes, the, the, we, we, we're, we, we still have some uh, bullishness uh, in the market, folks. But believe me, this, this pattern that we're seeing, the divergence we're seeing between the NASDAQ, the Dow Jones, and the uh, S&P 500, and also the uh, E-mini, uh, no, the Russell, is, uh, it's, very, it's very important. No one's paying attention to it, it seems like, but it does seem like it is an important concept you know, to pay uh, somewhat of, uh, you know, close attention to. So that's what we're paying attention to this morning is to see if these markets are going to be blasting on to the upside or not. But remember, we're looking at some really negative patterns in the DAX. We're looking at negative patterns uh, in the FTSE. And also we're looking at negative patterns in the Hang Seng, which I think is very important. It, let's bring it up and take a look at it. 877 Nine two seven six six four eight. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading in larry's first week alone he sent out 25 charts six videos and a full report to his subscribers in just one week if you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade then larry's service fibonacci 24 7 is something that you must try right now new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee with nothing to risk sign up now to larry pesavento's fibonacci 24 7 by visiting the front page of tfnn.com under trading newsletters the Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, uh, someone's asked a question about the Golden Week that is happening in Japan. All I know is it's a holiday between the 27th of April and the 6th of May. What that usually means is there's not a lot of traders out there, but the Bank of Japan is always out there, folks. And remember, they do play games, so pay very, very close attention to it. We'll take a minute here to uh, take a quick look at some of these currencies uh, that we're watching. But before we do that, there's a very interesting pattern here that we're seeing here since we're looking at uh, 
something on a longer term basis. I want to bring up the weekly uh, CRB index to let you folks take a look at it because uh, this is something that uh, looks very, very interesting. And that is, you can see that up channel where you have higher tops and higher bottoms. That's basically telling you you're in the direction of the short term trend. You can see the weekly chart is certainly heading to the downside, isn't it? But we do have that pattern known as a 135. That's a pattern from Roy Longstreet and his son Bill. And we're down there right now. This week is where we should be bottoming in the grains and some of the other things. I think the, the coffee has probably already turned. I think sugar's already turned. Uh, cocoa certainly has already turned, so maybe some of these are going to come home and see if we have a little bit of a bounce, if nothing else, but that is a possibility. Now, if this is the, if we go crashing down again this week in these grains, that would tell us that uh, most probably that we are going to go lower, and this could be related to what's happening in the U.S. dollar, because if that U.S. dollar starts trading above 98, that means the euro is in the sewer, and then the dollar being strong means that our products that we're selling are selling at a premium so we're going to be punished because of what we're looking at terry's asking us to uh take a take a look at the corn and we'll be happy to do that we'll bring it up here to take a look at christmas corn that's the one that we'll be watching this week and we'll bring this up so you can take a look at it but you, as you see here uh in this pattern that we're watching for corn we've taken out contract lows we did that last week and then we made that uh butterfly pattern you can see down at the 372 level we're trading a tiny bit above that right now but as i mentioned and this, this is why this is so much important if we start going below these lows that we made on thursday or friday uh, that is not going to be a very very positive thing for the grain markets i think they're going to hold but we'll have to wait and see the corn chart did not post let's see why it didn't let's try it now let's see if that worked uh i don't know why folks i am having a monumental computer problem i worked on it all i mean it's, i just can't tell you how many hours that i worked on this darn thing and it's uh it's just really drove me crazy. I'm not able to send videos out. Whenever I put the input into the video, I can see the video going, but you can only hear my voice very slightly. Hold on, folks. We've got something uh, uh, bop, bopping up. Uh, oh, we've got new lows here in the July beans. See, there's another one there that looks not, looks like it's actually, uh, I don't know if it's, yes, it is. It is. Hold on just a second. I've got to turn this off. Otherwise, it's going to drive us drive me crazy and if it drives me crazy it'll drive you crazy so we'll see here yes we did go down now we're making a new bottom here uh in the uh the beans have dropped actually uh, about a nickel since last night but they're forming a nice three drive pattern in july right on the opening so that's the kind of thing that you'd really like to see whether that's going to mean anything or not you know that's what we have to pay uh, you know pretty close attention to so this is what we got the stock market screaming again which is not unusual so let's just do one thing at a time here and then we'll get back to it but we really need these beans to hold this week and that's the the whole key to uh you know what we're watching here as we're looking at these things here this morning okay now uh, the next question that we were talking about was the currencies. Now, I, I believe the uh, the euro has made some type of a very, very small bottom, and I, I reiterate that word small by, <laughs> by a lot, because if you look at it here uh, in the euro, we've made a, a little three-drive pattern when we went below that 1160 area, and it hasn't gone anywhere, folks. We've only been able to rally about 70 or 80 pips. You know, that's really nothing. In order for this bottom... To actually show that it has any legs at all, we've got to get above the 112.30 level in the euro. That's uh, quite a ways from where we are right now. So if that would happen, that would say, yes, there's a possibility that that could be a bottom. But I, you know, here again, it's just too early. You just really can't take, you can't say that, you know, see that? And and Maria has just posted that the E-mini S&P will be at 30.50 by the end of the week. So we can book that one. Thank you, Maria, for the heads up. We'll keep an eye on that. And uh, next one we want to take a look at here is the U.S. dollar index. Uh, this is a this is basically the reverse pattern of the euro. And as we look at this, you'll see that the uh, 
you know, area of 98 is going to be very, very important because uh, there will be a 1.27 expansion there. We've certainly shattered that double top pattern, folks. We've certainly done that. And the key to this, if you'll look at that 382 retracement we made two weeks ago down there at 96.50, folks, it took 10 days for the market to make a 382 retracement in the uh, the dollar index. And, boy, whenever you see that, that is extremely bullish. And that's one of the reasons why we were bearish on the euro and bullish on the U.S. dollar because of that particular pattern. Had nothing to do with fundamentals, of course, but that's all it was. It was looking at that pattern that looks really, really cool. So uh, whether that's going to continue on, we'll have to, uh, have to wait and see. Okay, the next one we want to... Uh, Take a um, gander at, if you'll give me a second here, it's going to take me, I've got to do a few things here. Um, oh, dear, one minute here. Let's get this thing moving. Oh, hold on a second. Boy, I'm having all kinds of computer problems. You know, the British pound, we want to watch this because this one's acting uh, relatively nicely. It hasn't gone anywhere yet. And uh, we'll take a look at that, and we'll be able to see. You see, we're down to that 129 level in the in the pound, held up relatively well. The low was uh, 128.60, and if we get below that, that would say that that strong support has dissipated, and we're most probably going to go uh, a little bit lower. So we'll watch that one uh, very, very closely also. Okay. Uh, you have the, 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 uh, the British pound should have pop popped up, I think, didn't it? I uh, hope it did. Yep, it did. Okay. All righty. So we're up to date on that one. Uh, now, uh, well, I guess, you know, one of the things that we got really bearish on just a few, about a week or so ago was the Australian dollar because it was had that beautiful head and shoulders pattern. Let's get this up here so we can take a look at it. We had a beautiful head and shoulders pattern that finished back on March 4th. Then you'll see the ABCD pattern went up to 72, and then she st right after that ABCD pattern, just slightly above the 61% retracement. In other words, the difference between the 707, which is the reciprocal of the square root of 2, was uh, about uh, 14 pips, which is nothing when you're trading, you know, the currencies. That's like $140, and now it's broken, you know, almost, well, it has, it's broken $2,000, and it looks like it's heading down to that uh, 69 level again in the Australian dollar because this head and shoulders pattern has now been uh, it's been violated. You never should have taken out that right shoulder low. That's uh, this not going to happen. And that sets up that ABCD pattern that is down there at that 69 level. Very, very clear, you know, that that's what it wants to do. Now, whether it's going to do it or not, we don't know, but nobody else knows either. That's the big advantage. 877-927-6648. If you are in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the gold report currently 
currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The fund Funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, folks, I've been asked to take a look at the uh, coffee chart. This is something that we uh, don't look at too often, but if we'll take a look at this, you'll be able to see this level here at uh, 9,400. Uh, the important thing is if you look down at the bottom there where you see the 1.27 expansion coming in there at $87, we've rallied a lot, folks. We've rallied $0.10 cents a pound in coffee uh, very, very quickly, and then we backed off to try to fill that gap. This has a potential to be an extremely bullish pattern, folks. I'm not uh, uh, giving a buy order in coffee like that, but the pattern is certainly, uh, you know, very, very interesting because of that 1.27 expansion and the way that it came out of there. Uh, if you'll notice the move that we had in September to October, we rallied uh, 36 cents a pound in coffee. That's a that's about a twelve thousand dollar. Well, no, it's it's about about a fourteen thousand dollar move uh, in a matter of a month, and then it went right back down. It went from one twenty six down to almost eighty six. It dropped forty cents a pound. So this is really good for for Starbucks because their 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 number one uh, flagship is coffee, of course, and they could buy it at a cheaper price. So that's something that uh, you pay attention. But this has got a really potentially bullish pattern in the coffee. As my old grandma used to say when she used to feed me my oatmeal when I was four years old, if you have the urge to trade coffee and cocoa, go lay down on the couch until the urge goes away. That's really uh, doesn't, is not apropos anymore, folks, because with electronic trading, it is extremely fair now. So that's the uh, main thing is you've got to decide when you want to buy and when you want to sell. If we take a look at the sugar, I wanted to bring this to your attention because it's all part of that C, CRB index. And if you'll see that uh, what we're watching here, you'll notice that there should be really strong support in around 12, 12 cents a pound uh, in sugar. And uh, But it's been this really long trading range since October, nine months now that we've been in this trading range. So if we come out on the downside or the upside, it's probably got a long way to go. Those are the key things, you know, to uh, pay attention to us. Someone asked a question about, you know, uh, when you decide to do things on trading, I, you know, I'll try to answer this the best I can. But if you're going to risk something, you should never risk more than about 2% of the value of your account. Now, if you've got a really small account, and you're learning to trade, you know, don't worry about that, because you're probably going to blow the account up once or twice before you figure out what the heck you're doing right, because uh, the work that Mark Douglas did with the 10,000 or so commodity accounts that he looked at at Merrill Lynch was, uh, it was really very, very informative. You know, people with small accounts have virtually no chance of winning, but those that stick with it, in other words, uh, they try it and again and try it and again and try it and again, and then they finally get it right. You know, that, that, that takes some time. That's to go into school of hard knocks. What you're trying to do is to learn without giving up too much, and that's the real key. If you, you know, I've had a lot of people that I've talked to about learning to trade, and if, if you're anywhere near breaking even, folks, anywhere near 
breaking even, then what you want to look at is to take a look at these, uh, the fact that you are going to make it. Because all you have to do, if you're breaking even, you're only one little turn of the screw from getting everything right. So uh, pay attention to that. It's a, a real interesting one to uh, you know, to uh, really watch very, very closely. Anyway, that's what we're paying attention to here this morning. We'll see if that's going to uh, mean anything. The crude oil market, folks, has most probably uh, made a, a pretty significant top up in here. We've been talking about that area of $65 a barrel, and it has certainly done that. And we'll see if it is going to be uh, going to be looking at these uh, levels that we're watching here. Uh, today. Let's bring up the crude oil so we can at least get an idea of where we are because we're trading down around that 62.80 right now. That's down uh, $4 a barrel. This is the biggest break that we've had since uh, the December lows. Uh, if you'll notice that December low was a double bottom and uh, I mean right on a double bottom and if you looked at it in a longer term time frame you realize that 42 was uh, right at a 78 percent level of low we made down at 32 dollars a barrel several years ago so this is a really interesting chart there should be a lot of support uh, in the crude oil somewhere between uh, 62 dollars a barrel and uh, 60 dollars a barrel but below that then you're looking at the price is going in to the high 50s uh, without uh, any trouble at all is what we're watching here in the uh, crude oil here this morning. So that's what we're looking at. So we want to keep moving on to see what's going on here. And I, everyone is telling me that we're making new highs in the stock market, which we're very close, which is what we should be doing. But be careful up in here, folks. We got that uh, beautiful pattern in the NASDAQ, and I don't know if it's going to work or not, but it's certainly the kind you like to see if you're a pattern recognition swing trader, and that's what we're paying attention to. A text about the uh, the grains. I mentioned this uh, in the newsletter. Uh, we, we're coming down here. We've broken down through some major support in these grains. I know the corn hit the level right where it should have. Uh, took a little nibble on the long side there, but the stops at break even. We just haven't seen uh, you know uh, any really significant spot here where we can actually say, hmm, well maybe we'll take a take a gander at it right here. But uh, this is the week to be buying the grains, folks. I really believe that that one three five pattern on that CRB index is not to be. Uh, not to be uh, not respected, so pay attention. Now, we've got uh, on a programming note on the 3rd of May, I believe we're going to have uh, Norm Winsky, who calls it to the minute. He'll be our guest. I'm hoping to have uh, Tim Bost and also uh, Bill Meridian on this week to see uh, what they're looking at. So let's uh, let's keep an eye on some of these things because it's. Uh, I, I think we got a ch chance to have some really big turns coming here. Uh, in the market, and that's uh, one of the main things that we're paying uh, relatively close attention to. We got gold trading at the 1280 level. We had a high of a 1291. We're backed off 11 bucks. That should be some pretty good support here uh, in the gold market. Uh, pretty much what we're sitting at right here. But whether it'll hold there or not, we'll have to uh, wait and see. Those are the so the ones that are on the watch list uh, for this morning. The euro. We're trading at 11.52. Folks, this hasn't even bounced at all. It just looks like it wants to go a whole lot lower. Uh, that means that dollar index is going to go up, and that's one of the reasons why the grains are under so much pressure is because the dollar being that strong makes our stuff cost more. That's, uh, you know, that's what happens, you know. <laughs> if, you, if you can buy something cheaper across the street, you walk across the street and buy it, and that's pretty much what's going on in the grain market, so... That's uh, neither here nor there, but pay attention to it. The gold is okay, folks, as long as we stay above that 1267 level. That's really what it's all about. If we can stay above 1267, we've got a slight chance of the market uh, getting ready to rally. So that's uh, what we're looking at for the cheap seats here in uh, Tucson, Arizona, with the beautiful uh, – we got a beautiful full moon coming up here again, which would be kind of cool. And up, oh, oh, excuse me, the new moon is coming in on the, uh, the uh, this uh, Friday, so we'll pay. Uh, we'll let Norm tell us about that one for sure. All righty. Now, one other question that someone's asking is about the amount of money that they risk on any trade. Folks, you have to decide how much you're going to risk. That's what your job is. You've got to take the responsibility for that. No one can tell you how much you're going to to win or lose no one no one knows the answer to that
So uh, that's it. 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, so we're going to ask to take a look at the live cattle market. And what we're going to be looking at here is uh, August cattle. Uh, as you can see, uh, we topped back in late March. The market broke down to 115 a pound. We rallied up to exactly the 78% level. You can see it there. Rallied up uh, exactly 13 trading days to trade at uh, 120. That the high was 120.05. The 78% level was at uh, 119. 1995, so it was within 10 cents of the exact high in the cattle, and then, of course, it went from 120, and on Friday, we hit uh, 112, and I believe we'll be going lower here, but uh, it, it does appear that we made some type of a pretty significant top here uh, in the cattle, because we've gone from 121 down to 112. We've dropped $9 a pound, which is a a uh, big amount in uh, in the cattle market, but we should be coming into some support here at this 111 area because uh, it's a, the long-term 61% retracement is just a little bit below where we're trading right now. But the way we came down, look, folks, from last uh, 
last part of the week, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, there was a whole lot of selling coming in. And it was also affected the hog market with even the bullishness that we're seeing from the Asian flu uh, for the hogs. It uh, still, <laughs> we've gone from 99 down to uh, drop $10 a pound. So it's a uh, quite a bit for sure. Remember to live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. The lift should be trading at around 53 this week, folks. 52.50 for lift. That's what we're watching. Uh, remember we had that ABCD down there. I'll talk about that tomorrow, of course. But the lift at 52.50. I will post the lift uh, after the show is, uh, I'm going to be off the air here in a minute, but I will post the lift so you folks can take a Take a look at it, make your own decision. But let me see where it's trading, and I'll post it in here. We're almost done with the show here, and I don't want to uh, go overtime. Uh, 